everyone. So a few months ago I filmed, um, it was like a palette tag type video and uh, that was really well received because who doesn't love hearing about palettes really in video. Um, but I recently saw over on Natalie's channel, who I will link to down below, that uh, she had done a version of the palette video just involving lipstick and I thought that that would be a fun thing to film because I don't feel like I generally talk about lipstick that much. I'm always talking about eyeshadow palettes but I thought it might be interesting to show you more of what's in my lipstick collection um, and taking those questions from the palette video and just making them about lipstick. So love that over on Natalie's channel. Again I'll link to her down below and let's jump right into it. So the first question is what are your newest lipsticks? And I have to say, I haven't really bought lipsticks in quite a long time, just because I found like I had way too many of them. But I have been sent stuff by companies uh, in PR. So the most recent ones that I have received are these Bite, man, what's the exact name of these? The Bite Power Move Creamy Matte Lip Crayons, which I just filmed a video swatching the entire range. Uh, of shades and these are definitely my most recent ones. I just grabbed random ones. Actually this one's my favorite color. How handy. This is the shade Stinger um, and this is so so freaking lovely. The color is just beautiful. It's like absolute fire on the lips. Um, so these are definitely my most recent lipsticks. Uh, I did get them a while ago though. It probably, hmm, it was definitely before uh, the pandemic hit. Um, I just had held on to them for a while because I was like, I don't know, I'm not wearing them out. I wanted to film a video. So these are my newest um, and they're really lovely. Ooh, the next one is my oldest lipsticks. And I thought for sure I would have some MAC lipsticks that were very old, but I, I couldn't find any that were seriously old. So I pulled out these ones by Maybelline. So these are the Maybelline Vivids. I don't know if they even make these anymore. Um, but these are the lipsticks that actually turned me on to lipstick. I had never been a lipstick person. I never wore it. I thought it looked very strange on me. But when I saw these colors um, that Maybelline had launched, I was like, I want to be the person that wears that color. So I just kind of became that person. Uh, the shades that really enticed me were Vivid Rose which is this color here. It's so neon, I love it. And then the other shade I have is Shocking Coral, which is another stunning shade. I, this one is really flattering on me. I get a lot of compliments when I wear it, but I haven't worn it in a very long time. They still smell fine. Like there's nothing wrong with the scent of them. They don't look weird either. So I don't know, I haven't worn them in a while just cause I kind of forget about them, but these are definitely my oldest lipsticks at this point in time. I'm pretty sure anything that would have been older um, is something from MAC that I would have already back to MAC. So these are the oldest ones in my current collection. Um, and I should kind of pull them out and wear them again. Um, but it's one of those items that because it's a cream product, I get a little bit iffy, but they don't smell bad. So therefore they should be okay. Okay, the next one is my most expensive lipstick. And I gotta say, I end up receiving a lot of high-end lipsticks that I would not normally purchase myself, which is great, because then I get to try out all kinds of different things. But that means that I don't necessarily know the price tags of some of these things. So I was going through my collection and I was like, what would actually be the most expensive? And the first thing I pulled out was like a NARS lipstick. Cause I'm pretty sure that's probably in the like $35 range. Maybe it's a little bit higher. But then I came across this Lancome Juicy Shaker and I'm like, this has to be more expensive for sure. So I had bought the Juicy Shaker lip oils before. Uh, the blue one, I think it was called Mint To Be is the one that I had completely finished up. So I had bought that one myself and used it completely. But this is more like an actual lip color and this one was sent to me. So this is the Lancome Ju Juicy Shaker. Juicy Shaker? Yeah, I think that's the team. Matte, matte Shaker, Matte Shaker, there we go. Uh, in the shade Kiss Me Sherry. Um, these are fun, you just shake them up. I haven't worn this in a really long time even though the shade is lovely. And it's just got this kind of like conical doe foot applicator. And this gives really nice color on the lips. Um, I don't know the price tag off the top of my head, but I'm convinced that this has to be the most expensive one in my collection. So yeah, this one. My most affordable lipstick. I mean, that was so easy. Any of these Wet n Wild Mega Last lipsticks, I think they're like $1.99, but I don't know if they sell them anymore. 
because I don't think I've seen them in drugstores for a very long time, but these are freaking phenomenal. I mean, they're cheap in packaging, but the quality is so nice. I mean, this one is like busted completely. I had to put a little piece of tape around the case just to like make sure that it wouldn't pop open all the time, but it still does. So this is in the shade 903C, which is just peachy. This is a phenomenal everyday color. It is one of my most flattering in my collection, and I'm pretty sure they're only like a buck 99. I have a lot of the colors actually, um, a lot of reds actually. I have quite a few reds, and then but this one is definitely my most worn and my most favorite out of the Wet n Wild Mega Last lipsticks. Okay, the next one is the more, more everyday color. Um, I change a lot of my lipstick up pretty continuously, so it's not like I have a specific everyday color. But if I had to pick a shade that I felt like went with the most looks that I do and one that I default to a lot. It's definitely this one by Suva Beauty. So this is part of their, um, oh, it's a liquid lipstick. What are they actually called? Moisture Matte Liquid Lipsticks. And this is in the shade Awakening. It's just an easy nude shade on my skin tone. I feel like it matches a lot of like colorful eye looks. Like I could totally wear it with what I've got on today. It's just neutral enough without being concealer lips. Um, and even though it's quite pale looking, it actually does give me some color. So I've defaulted to this quite a bit and I love the smell on these. It's just like, like cake batter. I think it's like cake batter. Like it's, oh, it's really enticing. So this is one I've defaulted to quite a bit. Um, and initially I thought this was gonna be way too pale, but it turns out that it's really nice. The next one is the most colorful that I have. And that's kind of hard because I have a lot of like, colorful lipsticks like I've got greens blues blacks which is not that colorful but quite dramatic um and then I was like well I guess just pull out the most uncommonly used color that I have and call that the most colorful so I pulled out this NYX uh liquid suede in the shade I don't even know if the shade is on here pretty a uh, little denim dress like this is not a shade that I've worn <laughs> very often I might have worn it once um so I guess you could say that this is my most colorful lipstick, but it's not one that I pull out with any kind of regularity. Um, I have no issue wearing it, it's just I don't find blue lips in this particular shade is that flattering on me, um, but I guess this is my most colorful shade. So the next one is the one with the best memory. And I was thinking about this for a while and I was kind of going through my lipsticks and I was like, well, I don't have a lot of association with lipsticks that I have right now because I've gotten rid of like the colors that I got married in because I was like actually almost exactly 10 years ago. I wore the shades uh, Brave and oh no, what was the other color? Shoot, I forget it. They mixed two colors for me at MAC. One was Brave and the other one was a cream sheen, but I don't remember the name. And I've used those up and back to MAC them. So those would have been kind of nice to show, but I don't have them anymore. And then I came across this MAC lipstick in the shade Mare. And it's just a very basic pink. It's a little bit deep, actually. I would, I would say that's a bit of a deeper pink. Um, and the reason that this is so special is because I got the chance to meet Tessa Virtue, who is a Canadian uh, ice dancer, at a Nivea event. Oh, geez, I guess like two years ago now. Man, has it been that long? And I had become so enamored with her and her partner, Scott Moyer, at the Olympics that year. And the fact that I got to meet her at this event uh, was just absolutely phenomenal. But the reason that this is tied to that is because somebody um, had asked me if I could ask her what lipstick she was wearing during her Moulin Rouge uh, performance at the Olympics. And I, I, was, I was an absolute mess talking to her. I just sounded so stupid. I was tripping over my words. I felt like an absolute fangirl. And she told me that she was wearing Max Mare. And honestly, I've known about this shade for years. I know how to spell it I, like because it's a weird, like, well I, I don't know the word really. When you think mare you think like horse, right? This is spelled M-E-H-R so I don't actually know what that is but I knew how it was spelled. But when she said the name, shade name to me, like my entire mind just went blank. I pretended like I knew what I was talking about. I was like oh yeah that shade but I was just like mare, mare, what, she, what, what, what is that one? I knew exactly what the color was, but I was so starstruck by her that I just couldn't form any words or think properly. So this is tied to me being a super fangirl over Tessa Virtue. Um, maybe I'll put a picture up of us because I got that opportunity too. Um, but this is just tied to that. And 
I think it, that makes it really special for me. And it's a good shade too. Like I wear it and I'm like, oh yeah, that's a good choice. Okay, the next one is lipsticks that are worth the hype. And the Maybelline Super Stay Matte Inks are so worth the hype. No one talks about these anymore, which is a little bit of a shame, but they had their moment probably about a year ago when people would not be quiet about these. I kind of ignored them for a while. Um, I think it was Ray from The Notice who had initially told me about these and I was like, yeah, whatever, like I don't need more lipsticks in my life. But then I think I got a package in PR actually. So many, <laughs> so many products that I end up receiving end up being things that I absolutely love but are just ones that I would never have initially purchased. So it's great to have that opportunity. But I got these, I think in PR, tried them out and was like, oh. This is what everybody is talking about. These are a liquid lipstick that are not that dried paint crusty feeling on your lips. They feel a little bit like rubbery. They're quite, they're not textured, but they're, it's, it can be quite thick on your lips. Although I've been told that maybe I apply it a little bit too heavily and that's why they feel a little bit rubbery on mine. But these are immovable. They just lock onto your lips. They don't crack, they don't flake and they just feel pliable and comfortable. And I have never had that in a liquid lipstick formula before. It just had never happened. Every liquid lipstick I've ever put on in my life just ends up feeling crusty after a few hours. These are not like that. These stay put, they come in a huge range of shades and they are just absolutely the best. These are so worth the hype. If you're somebody who hated liquid lipsticks just because I always felt so uncomfortable, try these out. They are seriously worth it and uh, I always want them to make more shades just because I'm in love with them so much. Uh, the next one is not worth the hype. And I gotta say, sticking with that liquid lipstick problem, these Too Faced Melted Mattes are just not worth the hype. Now, I buy them because I'm kind of in love with the whole holiday ones. Like I love this shade in particular because it's the candy cane one from holidays, I don't know what year, probably three years ago now. And I love the scent on this because it's like, oh, it's so good. It's like peppermint candy cane-esque. And the shade is beautiful. But let me tell you, even though the color is lovely, these are not comfortable on the lips. And I think I initially thought that they were one of the better formulas years ago when I first tried them out and it's because they were better than most of the other ones that I had tried but fundamentally these are just not that great in the long run like they'll look good for maybe an hour or two if you're not eating or drinking but after a while I feel like it just sort of like starts to crack on the inner corners of my mouth um inner corners yeah inner <laughs> what is that area um outer corners of my mouth whatever this part right here it starts to crack and it just starts to like I don't know, it's like it kind of seeps away a little bit, doesn't tend to look that good. But I mean, I've been picking them up because I, I love the little holiday ones. I don't wear them that often. Every now and then I'll pull them out for like, you know, memory's sake and wear it for one day and then I'm reminded of why I don't really like these so much. But which one's this? Gingerbread Girl. It smells so freaking good. I mean, I'm kind of a sucker because I'm buying into the whole holiday theme stuff with the scents, but um, these are not worth the hype. <laughs> They are not worth the hype. They're not good in the long run on your lips. The upkeep is too much. Um, yeah, kind of kind of disappointing overall. Um, the next one is a favorite from a favorite brand. And it's kind of difficult because there's always this like one color in different brands that I just absolutely adore. And then I realized I've got one in a MAC lipstick that I have worn down so much that I really should talk about it. So this is the MAC lipstick in the shade Relentlessly Red. And that is all that I have left of this one. Um, this is a stunning color. This is probably my favorite type of pink red color. I mean, even like this one, um, it's, it's quite similar, but this one's got a little bit more neon coral to it, or at least that's how I see it. Uh, and it's just a beautiful shade. The only problem with this is because it's a retro matte formula, it can tend to look a little bit crusty. Um, but I put up with it because the color is so freaking gorgeous. I tried to have the Bite Lab in, I think it was New York, recreate this color and they, they just couldn't nail it. It was just not neon enough um, because I much prefer Bite's formula over this retro matte one by MAC. I, I like MAC lipsticks in general, but the retro matte formulas can be freaking brutal on my lips. Just starts to look crusty after a while. Um, so I wish I had this color in a more comfortable 
formula, but this has definitely been a favorite and I just feel freaking amazing when I wear it too. My lips just like scream neon and I love it. So yeah, this one's definitely like a top favorite. Okay, um, the next question is most used lipstick. And I guess in the long run, Relentlessly Red would be one that I have used the most just because it's worn down so much, but I've had it for a few years now. So that's use over multiple years. So I guess the one I would say I use the most recently is this one by Bite Beauty. So this is their Bite of Atlanta lipstick. And as you can see from it, it hasn't been worn down that much because I haven't owned it as long as the MAC one. But this has become a, a more day-to-day -day color for me, I guess you could say. Um, it just, it's one of those colors that just looks nice, like all the time. It just seems to really enhance my lip color. It's not doing too much. Um, if I just want something a little bit more subdued and on the peach side of things, I reach for this one. It's, it's an easy shade, I think is what I'm trying to say. I feel really comfortable wearing it. I think the formula on the Bite Lipsticks is always phenomenal. Like, they are never uncomfortable on the lips. I love the smell of them too. And this is just one of my absolute favorites. So I would say that this is one of my most used lipsticks right now. Uh, the next one is most underrated lipsticks. And I feel like these had a moment, but people kind of just forgot about them very quickly. They're the Too Faced Peach Kiss lipsticks. I love these things. <laughs> But I think they might have discontinued them because there's not that many shades available anymore. Or am I thinking of another brand? Anyway, these are the um, part of the peaches and cream range. And they're so lovely to wear. They're a matte lipstick, but they've got that sort of emollient feeling to them. Like there's a lot of glide when you're wearing them. The scent is also quite nice. It's that peaches and cream scent. Um, and it just it's just a really comfortable lipstick to wear. Uh, this is the shade Peach Beach, but I have about six other ones too that I've worn consistently. Peach Beach is another one of those like coral shades that I really enjoy, um, or peachy-esque. Um, Bridezilla is the one I'm actually wearing right now. I've just kind of dabbed it on and smeared it around to make it a bit of a soft look. But I, I really like the shades that I have and I'm really pleased with how comfortable it feels. So I feel like these are super underrated because no one talks about them anymore. The next prompt would be your most nostalgic or old school beauty YouTube lipsticks. So I think the Wet n Wild Mega Last lipsticks would fit into that as would anything by MAC because there was a point in time where everything was just like MAC, 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 MAC. Um, especially like those Dazzle glasses. I never owned any of them, but I remember Rags to Riches being like the most used lip gloss on YouTube back in the day. But the ones that I really remember um, hearing people talk about a lot too that I ended up picking up are the Revlon Super Lustrous Lipsticks. I was really turned on to these by, um, she used to be called Amariques, but she's now called Allison Anderson because she flipped to her real name. Um, and I really remember her wearing Cherries in the Snow, which is this color, which for the longest time was not available in Canada. I had to buy this in the US, which was so strange. I think it's available now, but for quite a few years, it just wasn't available here. This is a beautiful, I guess I would quantify this as like a magenta, magenta red? maybe. Uh, gorgeous color, super loud, um, just because it's so vibrant on the lips. But these, uh, in terms of formula, are freaking amazing. There is no scent to them, which is really nice because I like scent in lipstick, but if there's a scent that I hate, I will not wear that lipstick. So it's better overall, I think, to just have no scent, period. And these have no scent. They're a cream formula, and they just look freaking beautiful on the lips. They are so comfortable to wear. Probably one of my most comfortable lipsticks now that I think about it. Um, so this was Cherries in the Snow and the other shade that I have that just looks freaking amazing is Fire and Ice. This gets me so many compliments when I wear it. People are just like, what the heck are you wearing? And it's almost funny when I tell them that it's a Revlon lipstick that like became famous, like what year was it? Like the 1950s or something like that? Because most people expect you to say like current products that are new and exciting. But I always like saying, hey, I'm wearing Revlon's Fire and Ice. And they're like, really? Like it's just drugstore products? I'm like, yeah, they're, they're amazing. So these are the ones that I remember people talking about on YouTube. Um, aside from just MAC lipsticks. And I was so glad when I picked these up and discovered that I like them so much because they are super comfortable. The colors that I have are really nice, um, but they make, uh, and I have, tend to have like bright colors, but they have a whole range of shades. And it's one of those uh, lines that I hope that they just never get rid of because they are stellar. Oh, that's funny. I had another thing here actually. Maybe I should mention these. Do you remember um, the Rimmel Apocalypse? 
I only have one shade I think now left. Uh, they're old. <laughs> I haven't used these in quite some time, but this is still like my favorite kind of red pink color that I keep coming back to. They had such a peculiar scent to them. Man, that scent takes me back. I bought these when I was in Ireland like seven or eight years ago. Um, such a peculiar scent, but these were so raved about by like, I think it was uh, Fleur de Force was talking about these all the time and I bought a whole bunch of them. They were pretty nice, a little bit higher maintenance than what I wanted, but these are like, I think the precursor to the liquid lipstick because these were not, they didn't dry down. They just kind of stayed there, but they were super vibrant and a lot of fun and I really like this color. What was the shade name actually? Um, Stellar. So the next question is most disappointing and I have to go with these Fenty Mademoiselle lipsticks. Now this one is in the shade Turks and Caicos and I gotta say this one actually worked out okay for me. This is like a fun greenish blue. Uh, there's more green in that than blue. Anyway, um, this one was nice. I think this one went on my lips really well. It's quite matte and dry, um, but this one didn't look patchy or anything like that. However, the first one that I tried by Fenty in this Mademoiselle formula was like that vibrant purple color and it was absolute trash on my lips. Like just garbage, so bad looking, patchy. It clung to spots and I'm not usually somebody who suffers with like dry lips or clinging areas. And it just looked so bad that I think I put it on at work and then after 30 minutes I was like, absolutely not, get this off of my lips. And I think I jumped it immediately or did I talk about it in like a fails video? I, I don't remember. It was so bad, I just wanted absolutely nothing to do with it and it made me put off trying this Turks and Caicos one um, off for a while because I just thought it was gonna be just as bad. So while this one is not disappointing, I have to say the fact that the formula itself is so inconsistent makes this probably my most disappointing lipsticks in my collection. Uh, I only have the green now, but I would never buy any of the other colors just based on my experience with that purple shade. This one's nice, but the purple is terrible and I don't really wanna risk buying another shade only to find out that it was like, the formula is more like the purple one. So even though I like this one, I have to say the formula inconsistency definitely makes it the most disappointing. And the next one is the most unique, and I love these so freaking much. They are the Ciate Glitter Flips, and I have some of the more like out there shades. I've got like the black that kind of transforms into like a purple shimmer. I've got the teal turquoisey shade that uh, has like iridescent purple, blue, silver glitters in it. And then I've got this like, man, that just looks black on camera. This is more of like a deep purple. And I, nobody talks about these anymore either, but these were the lipsticks that you put on, it's liquid lipstick. You let them dry for like, let's say three minutes. So it's completely, completely dry. Then you press your lips together. And then when you unfold your lipsticks, the glitter just appears. It is so magical. Doing that the first time I was like, like, wow. <laughs> Just, I'm not super into glittery lips, but there's something really special about these. These are fun to wear every now and then. And while I have some of the more out there colors, they do make like some reds uh, and some more neutral tones too. I, I think I actually have a small version of a neutral tone color, but I would love to have this in like one of their red shades. I think that'd be like so pretty for the holidays, like Christmas time. Um, but yeah, these are definitely my most unique ones for sure. And the very last question is, what is the best smelling lipstick in your collection? And that has to be these Too Faced La Creme lipsticks. These smell so freaking good. It's basically like a sweet lemon scent and they don't make these anymore, um, which is really disappointing because these were another great formula that just, I feel like they had their moment and then people just forgot about them. But they smell so good. And it was so unique too when these first came out. Like most lipsticks back then only really smelled like vanilla or like a watermelon scent, which is something that has never appealed to me. I hate fake watermelon scent. Anyway, these La Cremes just smell so freaking nice. They've never gone off on me. I've had a few of these for like seven years, maybe, maybe six years, and they still smell really good. I love that lemon scent. I think it's such a unique scent too, just because everything was vanilla, vanilla, vanilla for so long. Um, so yeah, these are definitely my most favorite scents in my collection. But if I had to pick like a backup sort of scent, I would say like the uh, Bite Amuse-Bouche lipsticks 
also have a bit more of a lemony lime scent and I really like how brands are kind of defaulting to that scent now because it's just something a little bit different it's nice it's refreshing it's not thick and cloying um, like vanilla sometimes can be so it's nice to have a bit more of a refreshing scent on your lips every now and then Whew, okay I feel like I have talked forever about lipstick right now my jaw is actually tired from talking so much so that's gonna be it for the eyeshadow palette tag turned lipstick tag I hope you found this interesting uh, thank you so much for joining me today and I will hopefully see you next time bye